Khatam Khwajgan, when you sit in Khatam Khwajgan, then you need to be very careful and sit down with adab, with manners, respect. Obviously, you're in the masjid, all you uh, people will have wudu. But those who listen online, the women folk who listen, who are not in our area, are not sitting in front of us. So it's necessary to hear Khatam Khwajgan that you sit with wudu if you want to take the benefit. You should sit with wudu in ablution state, in a pure state, and totally you you should, whether you're here or away from the majlis, you should sit with adab and should consider totally as if you are sitting in that gathering. And it's better that you're um, secluded, you could say. Like, for example, we've made this environment, environment. There is darkness physically, but there's a lot of light at the same time. Yes, people say that this is dark, but we call it light. So, why is it like this? This is a cure, this is a focal point, so that we focus more and pay attention more. So that on dhikr, khatam ghajgan, we can increase our attention and focus and concentration. You can do this as well. You should do this. That those individuals who are listening at the moment and who are partaking in the gathering, the women folk, etc. Some may be sick, somebody may have a headache, some may have a body pain, any other type of sickness. So with caution, be careful, uh, have respect, have wudu, recite the kalamat at the same time together. And we, until your tongue doesn't move, if there's no light voice audible, that means that you're not reciting Khatam Khwajgan. If you're not doing this, it's not dhikr khafi, it's not silent dhikr, this is jahir dhikr, loud dhikr. You don't sleep in this, and your tongue is not silent. Rather, instead you will get reward for this dhikr when your voice is audible, and karamun ka tabin, the angels will record this. If they cannot hear your voice, what will they record? Dhikr khafi has different virtues, this dhikr is different virtues. So when you complete this, when you physically recite then you can hear the voice and so you have to with a low voice you keep repeating low tone you keep repeating the verses there are two methods one is as I said to you that there's a certain limit an upper limit to recite for example but if the sheikh that's if you do it yourself but obviously Khadam Khwajgan is done in the company of the Sheikh. It's not done individually. You don't do Khadam Khwajgan on your own. It should be done, performed in a gathering with the Sheikh, with the teacher. That's a very important factor. So whilst the Sheikh is reciting the Kalima, the verses of Khadam Khwajgan, as I mentioned previously to you, some numbers that you can recite you know, yourself. That's okay. But in actual fact, it should be such that whilst the Sheikh is reciting the Kalamat, you should keep reciting the Kalamat ongoing without counting any upper limit or number and stopping at that, unless the Sheikh, your teacher, changes the Kalamat. So you keep reciting. That's what you should do. Until the Sheikh, the teacher doesn't change or alter the verse, you don't, you keep on reciting. Secondly, those who are sick, those who want to take benefit from this, then do this. They sit with Wudu in the gathering, recite all the Kalamat, and then keep a glass of water next to you. As soon as the kalama ends, as the khatam khwajgan ends, then you blow three times onto the water, and then drink that water, open up both hands for dua, then blow three times on the hands, then each time you blow, recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim after that, then three times on the whole body, wipe your hands, all sort of pain, sickness, distress, Allah Ta'ala will eliminate. 